That's me in my 1971 Volkswagen Carmen Ghia. You know, I love to drive a lot, but when it comes to fixing cars, well, that's another story. Hans Hellinger and Tony Iskra run South Euclid Auto Repair. Tony Iskra. Since that I've been working pretty steady. I was working uh, in Europe for five years and I've been working here for 27 years now. So over 30 years I've been working in the car industry. So uh, what made you come to this country? Well, there was a, after the war it was kind of pretty, pretty bad the economy, pretty bad situation in Europe. So we decided to go up, look for the work, look for the search for a better life. And then I decided to come to the States. I went to Italy. From Italy, I went to the Cleveland, and I stayed in Cleveland all the time. Hans Hellinger. I was, I was 10 years old. 10 years old. Yeah. Um, this was in, in Hungary. At the, you know, I, so one day, you know, I was actually my parents missed the train, and then I came a truck around, you know, and then uh, he took us, and I was sitting in the front, you know, and then so then I figured I'm gonna be a mechanic someday. Someday I'm gonna do that job, you know. And then since then, you know, I always was interested. I used to fix the bicycle, you know, bikes and everything. You know, I was 11, 12 years old, my dad had a bike. I used to repair it all the time, you know. Then I came to Germany, I was 13 and a half, and then I... I was a apprentice for three and a half years, and then after that, you know, when I was finished, I worked for a truck companies, I drove for old truck, you know, truck over there too. And uh, then I came uh, to the United States in 1959. Special, specializing, specializing in foreign cars. We do a lot of German cars. We also do now a lot of Japanese cars. We specialize in all imports. Yeah, we specialize in the diesel cars and also gasoline engines. Yeah, we can try to save some money to the customer, but we're trying to do a good job and they put a good parts on that car. So that's the, that's the main thing. That's why you we are in the business. I'm in business for 18 years now over here, and that's, I got a steady customer coming back all the time. So they are happy with the jobs that we do. So you do have a lot of steady customers? Oh, we got a lot of steady customers. Otherwise, I wouldn't survive if I wouldn't have had the customers. And uh, the parts are going to be right. And I mainly am interested in most of that. It's the quality of the work the mechanics put into it, and I had to supervise the work is done right, and the car is satisfied to the customer. Mercedes is a nice car. And you know, that's my favorite one, you know. And then, you know, I, I mean, I stick with Porsches or the VWs, you know, like, you know. And then, you know, I got an American car, it's an old Scotless, you know, they're nice cars too. My kids, you know, my youngest son has an old, you know. So I like, you know, the old. But favorite, you know, I mean, cars, you know, it's a car, you know, I mean, for me. You know? If I could afford it, I would buy a Lamborghini, you know. <laughs> this car was an accident. You can see that. This is uh, junk. I mean, this is not worth to fix it. The Austin. Austin Healy 3000. They were, used to be very hot cars in the 60s. I used to work for a dealer. He used to sell Austin Healy's and uh, sports car development. A similar car like that was in a movie, what they call that movie? James Bonds was driving this car. What do you call that movie? One of the James Bond movies? Yeah, yeah. It was Don't Austin Healy 3000. You know, but they modified it. You know, they put, you know, those, uh, all kinds of gimmick on it, you know. But it was Austin 3000. They used to buy this car, maybe for this car, $4,000, $6,000. Not anymore. Not anymore, no. no. Way. You can't touch under 30000 anymore. The good time is gone, you know. I put an excellent beam on this car. Some uh, customer owned this, Mastriani is the name. The only thing, it's a good running car. The only thing is the body. It's rusted out. But he said he's gonna fix it up himself, you know. Doing some work. And yeah, he, I see he did put some primer on already. But he didn't do such a good job. Yeah, I put the excellent beam on it, the excellent beam rusted out in this. 
But I'm a guy, you know, runs. He, he drives it every day, I, I assume. Yeah. He yeah. should keep this for 20 years. Yeah, it's you know? gonna be a pile of rust in five. Yeah, but uh, you know, uh, it's a collection. You know, look at like a Mercedes Goldwing. You know, cost uh, for three hundred thousand dollars. You can't even touch one. Maybe if we keep this for 20 years, you know, something like that. You know how much maybe worth this money is? And it's gonna be rusted out. Look though. at the. I know, I know. Well, what I'll do? Like, like you, to get you a can't hold of drive with Vinatan. Don't drive with Vinatan. Yeah. You have to, uh, you know, it's just summer car. But. Uh, I tell you, you know, look at the Porsches, the old Porsches, you know, the Super 90s and those, you know, people willing to pay, uh, what, the car was $3,000, they paid $15,000, 20000 now for the cars, you know, yeah. you know, but I mean, sure. The specialty places, they want to, you know, do the fast job and they get it out very fast, but they don't do quality work. Quite a few of them I see when a car comes down here to my place, they said, well, check, uh, what they did, and I found out that half of the time the jobs are not done properly. They had to be done over, and to do it over, it costs money, you know, so people are not too happy. Well, there are a lot of good automobiles on the market today. My favorite car definitely would be a Mercedes or, or Audi or BMW 733, and that's probably one of the best cars today on the market. So there are a lot of good cars, you know, like uh, Toyota makes good cars right now, and a lot of good small American cars now. Really pleased with the <laughs> improvements they did on their small American cars now. It's like um, Toyota is making now with the Chevy, Chevy Nova, that's going to be a good car. Uh, Volkswagen is making a Fox, it's going to be a pretty good car. So I think it's going to be a lot of good cars on the market in the near future. Well, the car is getting more complicated. They're getting more complicated. I mean, you know, with the new style, complicated, they're going to cost more to maintain. You know, I mean, uh, let's say you buy a you know, uh, any car, you know, I mean, everything is nice and good, you know, I mean, but it's kind of cost you more. And if anybody have to realize that, you know, the more things you have on the cars, you know, the more it's going to cost you. So uh, the people have to realize that someday, you know, it's going to cost them a lot of money. And maybe in 20 years from now or 30 years from now, average guy can't even afford a car if they keep up like that with the airbags and all this. You know, maybe uh, you and me, we're going to walk for the bicycle, you know? After the interview, Tony invited us on a test drive. No, a test drive. Okay, this guy brought this car down. Um, check the clutch load bit and make sure everything is working fine. We did a lubrication oil change, change the transmission oil for him. He doesn't use this car too much. Now, this car is about 20 years old. That's a, that's, there used to be a Volkswagen Beetle. Um, they cut it out and put a, a doom buggy chassis on it, so the guy used it in the summer. I was surprised. He told me yesterday he drove this car down to Florida one year. And I, when I sit in the seats over here, they're kind of narrow. And I say, how the hell the guy was sitting in the seat from here to Florida is beyond me, because they are very narrow. We, there's not too much room to move in this thing. It's just a small thing. But, uh, guy enjoys so much he doesn't use it only in the summer months so it's a nice little buggy you know runs good you know. and if this thing has a lot of power it can go pretty fast you know, but we're not gonna go fast today because <laughs> the speed limits over here are pretty uh, low and they're pretty strict policemen are watching all the time you know almost every car I, I test drive uh, every car uh, that's the that's the result of the work that you do if you road test the car, you test drive it, and you find out how the car perform. If uh, the job we did is um, satisfactory, and then from there on, if I release the car, I make sure that everything is working. Uh, and that's what a customer is satisfied when you find out everything is fine. We'll make a circle around the block, and this way you can, if you want to take any pictures of the neighborhood, uh, everything is nice now, everything is blooming. Spring is already in a full force now, so we're going to enjoy a nice little ride down the block. Yeah. See, I already got a customer waiting for me. It's amazing. Every time, every time I go back around the block, I come back, I got someone who's waiting for me. So that's my my job all day long, taking care Okay, thank you. I appreciate it very much there, Stevie. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I appreciate it.
Okay, the main thing is uh, keep changing oil every 3,000 miles. Almost every car gets uh, abused because they said the oil is not changed for uh, six, 7,000 miles. If you buy a new car from the dealer, they tell you don't change the oil uh, 7,000 miles. Some people go to 10,000 miles. Well, that's not true because the oil, today the engines are small, fast engines, so they burn a little oil and they, in the city they get hot, so the oil gets uh, uh, much faster, the you know, viscosity is low, so there's not enough lubrication. It's a lot of sludge in the engine. They clogged up the uh, filter in the strainer in the oil pump. There's a lack of lubrication. They lock the bearings, uh, camshaft gets bad. So that's a, the main thing is a lubrication, change the oil every 3,000 miles, and the service once a year.